Julie Gunlock from the Independent Women's Forum joins us. Hopefully she will not. Julie, you're not going to bring us down <laughs> Never. with your stories today, are you? Never. Okay. Okay. Good. I'm glad. Uh, and I'm glad to know that the uh, the betters are uh, are eating so well, Julie. Yes, yes. Uh, our, our, our friend Jay Christian Adams has a piece uh, on the lunch choices at, uh, at Sidwell Friends uh, in Washington, D.C., uh, you know, the, uh, this is where the president's uh, kids go. Many of the betters uh, attend Sidwell Friends. $36,264 per child per year to attend Sidwell Friends, Julie. Yeah, yeah. My husband and I considered that, but we just the public school was better. <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine? <sighs> yeah, so Jay Christian Adams points out that... Um, Wednesday of this week, the, uh, the the students there at Sidwell Friends will be served uh, chicken wings and potato chips. Uh, on Thursday, they'll get a, a Cuban sandwich. Mm. Uh, yes. Now, uh, public schools in Florida had to eliminate Cuban sandwiches because they violated uh, Michelle Obama's lunch standards. Uh, one uh, uh, school nutrition worker said, no way. Can we fit uh, Cubans on the menu anymore? Jay Christian Adams says students next week at Sidwell Friends can enjoy Philly cheesesteaks, meatball subs, beef nachos on uh, Veterans Day. I mean, wow. Yeah. It sounds like the food's really, really good yeah, there, no or at least good tasting. Yeah, you know, uh, I actually, uh, we, we've written, we followed this uh, for quite a while in May of 2014, just this past May, Charlotte Hayes, another fellow at IWF, wrote about Sidwell Friends. Uh, choices, um, uh, lunch choices. There were things like uh, a custard tilapia. I have no idea what that is. Sounds disgusting. Um, uh, <laughs> pesto cream, uh, marinara sauce. Uh, as you said, uh, the, at that time, the ne- uh, the beef nachos, uh, the baked three cheese lasagna, and a pepperoni flatbread bread pizza. Um, you know, they just put the flatbread in there to make it sound fancy. But the bottom line is, Sidwell Friends has a long record of uh, of, of not really following the let's move rules and certainly not uh, following the school lunch rules. And that's fine. They're a private school. Um, but, but you know, you do have to consider the fact that Michelle Obama sends her kids to a school that d- does not abide uh, by the draconian rules of the school lunch program, where you can't even put a little bit of Parmesan cheese, a little bit of on broccoli, a little bit of butter and salt on corn. And you can't put any accompaniments on the on the brown rice, the grim meals that ch- children are being forced to eat uh, because of Michelle Obama's school reform lunches, and yet her children are enjoying food that tastes good. Um, this is the way that um, all school lunch programs should be run. They should be run privately. Uh, the school lunch nutrition directors uh, should have sort of control over what kids are getting, the recipes that are used. And frankly, uh, the school administration knows the kids in their schools the best. Um, so they should be the ones, um, like Sidwell Friends, uh, they should be the ones making the rules about school. So I'm sorry for going on so long. I know you probably want to interject here. No, listen, I'm, I'm, I'm happy to let you vent uh, <laughs> a little bit. I'm, I'm, I'm right there with you. And, and again, I mean, this, this is one of, I think, uh, those crystal clear examples uh, that just, it, it, it just it shows, uh, I think, the disparity here that we're talking about and, and the ideology that we're talking about. Because ultimately, these rules that are devised for, uh, for the American people, Julie, they're not devised for, for the, the children of the divisors. Right, exactly. Right? Uh, the, these are not rules for them to live by. Right. These are rules for us to live by. Yes, I mean, our betters, our betters tell us, our benevolent government bureaucrats uh, who know better than us about our own lives and, our, and what our children should eat tell us, tell us how to eat, and yet they send their children to, you know, $40,000 a year private schools where they get pesto cream pasta, three cheese lasagna, and things that taste good. Um, so people, look, you know, my narrative on this has always been, look, the school lunch program will never improve. It's, um, it's a terrible program. It's like every other entitlement program. It's run badly. Look, the school lunch program provides millions every year. I think it's five million meals to, um, every year. I mean, what restaurant provides that many meals a day uh, besides jails? 
Um, so these these programs are not going to improve. The only way to improve the way a child eats is to pack them a lunch. It doesn't take long. And look, this whole thing about people who can't afford it, um, people who live under or at the poverty line in this country get a lot of other assistance. They get food stamps. Um, they get WIC. Uh, they get, you know, a number of other food assistance programs. Um, that is what it's supposed to do. It's supposed to provide these people with, you know, some, you know, some amount of food, money for food, so that they can pack their kids a lunch. And look, if we think that's not enough, we should ch- we should turn the school lunch program into a voucher program where people are given what money um, to in order to feed their children, in order to pack lunches. Um, this is a far better way to do it. It results in much more nutritious children. There are study after study says this this is true. Um, so again. Um, you know, I think it's really important that we look at this might look like, oh, just, you know, beating up on the first family because their kids go to private school. But no, it is a lesson about how, you know, they view these rules as only for the minions and they eat and their children eat differently. So I think it's really important that people take note of that. Me too. All right. I also think it's really important that people take note uh, of this new story out, Julie, uh, that your receipts. <laughs> that you're handling can kill you. Yeah, this- uh, and I want people to understand this, that uh, touching a receipt, it's not Ebola that you have to worry about. It's the receipts at the grocery store. Right. They can kill you. Right. Look, there's a new study. I mean, my God, it, it generated so many terrifying headlines. I don't know how much long we have in my bed here, but, I mean, there were things like, uh, it's, uh, you know, if you touch a receipt, it's gonna, you're going uh, gonna, gonna to be fat. You're going to get obese, uh, diabetes. You're going to get cancer. If you eat, if you touch French fries and then with those greasy fingers, if you touch a, a receipt, uh, it's going to absorb even more. I mean, the absurdity of these things. Now, I will tell you, there was a Finnish study. This study was bogus. I mean, the study that just came out that's generated all these headlines, totally bogus. The guy behind the study is a guy named Frederick Von Saul. He's an anti-chemical activist. So the first thing you should know is that this is a study generated. It's a bad study. It's going to be dismissed. It's not going to be. It probably won't even be peer-reviewed. And it's and it's. But it's yet. It's generated all of these headlines. Let me tell you about a Finnish study that actually has been peer-reviewed. And it says that a, a, a cash register, a, a worker on a cash register, would have to touch 140 receipts. If she touched 140 receipts, she would still have an exposure level 25 times below the safe established levels. So the point is, is that if if a cashier is safe right? These are the people who touch receipts all day. Then you, who maybe touch, you know, an average of 10 receipts a day, you are perfectly fine. So I think the point is, you can read the, the longer explanation at IWF.org, but I'm trying to tell people, don't freak out. Don't wear, you know, leather gloves in the middle of summer uh, because you're afraid of touching a receipt. Um, ultimately, you know, uh, technology is going to fix this problem. You're going to pretty soon be using your iPhone, and you won't even get receipts. But I just think it's important to, to point out the absurdity of these, st- these studies that generate such terrifying uh, headlines, which actually um, aren't true. You're not dying. You're not going to be uh, in danger from touching your receipt. Uh, Julie Gunlock's uh, uh, coming to you from uh, Big Paper today. <laughs> That's uh, right. Listen, I'm a show for Big Paper. You are a shill for Big Paper. Uh, Dunder Mifflin, Wouldn't that be nice? uh, I, yes, I'm Dunder sure, Mifflin. is paying Wouldn't you. Wouldn't that be nice? My God, maybe I could actually buy a new pair of shoes. <laughs> <laughs> you know, here I think the bigger lesson is uh, for people to, if you're, handle, if you're in a job where you have to handle receipts, don't be too fast. Uh, you know, yeah. take your time. <laughs> you, don't, you don't really want to be all that good at your job. <laughs> Uh, because then right. you might be handling more receipts. So I think you should dawdle a little more, uh, really lose the good customer service. And, in fact, forget to pe- forget to give people the receipts. That's right. Uh, and and, and don't, don't touch the paper until they ask for it. Because uh, despite what Julie tells you, if you touch one of these receipts, you could die. You could die. You could die. There's so many scary things out there. I mean, you know, October is Halloween. People don't even have to go to haunted houses. They just have to go to a pizza place and be offered a receipt. That's terrifying. Uh, you can at least get a paper cut. I mean, even if it doesn't lead to, right, right. it could at least give you a paper cut. So better safe than sorry, and slack off while you're at work. Right, exactly. Uh, yeah. that, that's, Very good advice. Thank you. Uh, yeah. I hope my kids aren't listening right. to this. This would be this would be bad. Uh, as if that wasn't bad enough, so we've got the receipts that can kill you, 
And then, Julie, my, this culture of alarmism stuff, it really does keep you busy, doesn't I, it? I, I, I will always be employed. I'll be like, I, I seriously, I'll be like 104 years old, still trying to debunk some of this ridiculous alarmism. The Guardian, how household plastics could ruin your sex life. <laughs> uh, <laughs> the t- Okie dokie. The uh, Telegraph, rubber ducks can kill your sex drive, research finds. Uh, Cosmopolitan wonders, are, are chemicals in plastic reducing your sex drive? That is like the unsexiest Cosmo right. headline that I've read. Right. Well, you know, uh, what's, what's so interesting is, is again, the, the study that generated all these he- headlines, um, it was it, the, they, they took the urine from pregnant women and determined that the women who had higher levels of chemicals um, didn't really want to have sex. Well, you know, there's another thing that, um, that makes you not want to have sex. <laughs> Being pregnant, uh, you know, it's, it's not a good time. Uh, you know, you feel gross, you feel fat, you're, you know, sweating all the time, you know. So I just find it hilarious that these, these studies come out, um, uh, you know, studying the sex lives of pregnant women and claim it's, you know, the trace amount of chemicals that are in something that they've used, uh, not the fact that, you know, they've gained 40 pounds and they have a bowling ball in their stomach. So, um, uh, you know, again, these studies are absurd. Um, somehow these reporters never, never really delve into the details Uh, There's absolutely zero investigative reporting of chemicals. It's all just repeating uh, what the press release says accompanying the study. There's really no analysis. So, um, so again, (laughs) um, for people who have a a, you know a shred of common sense, when they see a study that says pregnant women you know don't want to have sex, it's because they're pregnant. It's not because you know they touched a piece of Tupperware. Yeah, you. In fact, you point out you say, well, the study says it's the plastics that you surround yourself uh, all day. Uh, what are we supposed to do with this competing study that says it's house cleaning and fast food uh, that's affecting your sex drive? I, I think clearly what you need to do is throw away everything that's plastic. Um, don't do any housework. Yeah. Uh, and, 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 and on those rare occasions when you eat fast food, make sure that you recognize that the cashier doesn't want to touch the receipt. Right. And, and so, you know, when they're slower than you're used to and it's not quite fast food, have some patience with Look, those people. All I say, all I can say is the alarmists want us all to be living in hazmat suits. And actually they're probably more, they're easier to come by now with the Ebola scare. So if you want to really believe every alarmist claim, get yourself a hazmat suit and live in it. Because according to the alarmists, Everything is killing you. Everything is killing you. Um, so the way to avoid it is, again, you know, to sort of live in this body condom. You know, don't touch anything. Uh, don't, don't use any uh, modern uh, uh, equipment to modern, um, you know, products. Um, you know, sort of live like the Amish. Um, that's, that's sort of the way that a lot of these alarmists, a lot of these environmental activists want us to live. I choose not to believe the alarmists. I choose to live my life the way I want to. And hopefully um, people can be reassured. IWF's done a lot of work in this. We're really trying to reassure people about these kind of insane um, and, you know, uh, you know headline-generating studies. But people need to understand that there's a difference between causation and correlation. Um, headline writers love to ignore that fact and, um, and say, look, proof that this is true, proof that this is happening. Um, but really, if, if you're scared about something, um, Google it. I, I'm sure IWF has written on it, and, and we, we really are working hard to reassure people i'm moving into a uh, human hamster ball next week i i'm sorry i'm just uh <laughs> you know we have tiny houses this will be my my, my tiny environment right, right. Uh, and exactly. we can all get used to our human hamster balls <laughs> and we'll all be safe <laughs> julie listen thank you so much for coming on the program it's always a pleasure and i uh, look forward to doing this again soon thanks for having me